Hello everyone, today I'm gonna talk to you about stable video diffusion which allows you to generate video like this one from a single image. I'm gonna also show you the effect of different checkpoints on the final results video. We're gonna also see what are the key parameters for stable video diffusion extension. So let's dive into tutorial. Before we start, make sure that you have the latest version of Comfy UI. To do so, go to your Comfy UI manager, then click Update Comfy UI. Once it's done, close the application, then make sure to download the stable video diffusion extension. For my case, I use the 9.5 GB version SVDXT, which allows you to generate videos at 25 frames. Once downloaded, make sure that you copy your SVD extension into your Comfy UI folder. Okay, now we are good to go. Once you open up your Comfy UI, just use my workflow link on the description. Download the workflow, then simply drag it here. We can see that our workflow is composed of three main groups. The first one is the stable diffusion images, where we're gonna use only stable diffusion checkpoint. The second one is the SDXL image generator. I'm gonna use only SDXL checkpoint. And the last one is the stable video diffusion, which allows us to generate video from a single image. I wanted to show you the effect of the initial images from different checkpoints and see which model is better as the Excel or stable diffusion models. So let's start. I'm gonna first bypass this workflow and select the Dream Shaper checkpoint. In my text prompt, I want to generate an image of a chameleon on the ground. So I'm gonna select the same prompt and paste it here for the SDXL image and do the same with the negative prompt okay for the key sample i'm gonna use 25 steps and cfg value of 8 the sampler name i'm gonna select dpmpp and the scheduler is gonna be cars For the SDXL version, I'm gonna use the Realism Engine SDXL and keep the same parameters for the key sample. Also, one important thing that you need to know that stable video diffusion works only with those height and width resolution. So keep that in mind when you generate your images. Let's click Q prompt. Here we have our images. Oh, I forgot to plug the clip here. Let's do it again. You can see that the STXL generated more important images compared to the ST images. Okay. Now let's change the checkpoint for another one. I'm gonna also reduce the CFG scale here. Let's see what we got now. We have our STXL version. Let's wait for the ST version. We can see that we have a main difference in color. And I still believe that the STXL version is better. Okay, let's do one more try. This time, 
I'm gonna change the STXL version to a turbo version and see the results. We can see that it's slightly better than the previous one. And now we have our STX server. Wow, we have a lot of colors here compared to the SD version. Okay, we're gonna do another try, but I'm gonna change the prompt for something that is uh, completely different. I'm gonna type in wherever forest background. Now let's select the prompt and paste it here. Let's type in Q prompt. We have our SD version, which is an acceptable quality. Let's wait for the SDXL version. I think that the SD image is more better quality than this one. It seems like a cartoonish style for me. Okay, let's change our checkpoint to the previous one, Reality Edge, and Q prompt. See, we have more realistic version here. Same results. We have a cartoonish style, but I wanted a realistic style. So I think that stable diffusion is more suitable for generated natural landscapes. Okay, let's do one more try. Person. Realistic cyber. One. Realistic ice. Let's copy and paste the prompt and compare the results again. We have our SD version. and our SDXL version. It is also looking more impressive for both versions. Okay, let's change the prompt. Can I add full body? And see the results. And we have our SDXL version. I think that SDXL is better for adding details than classic SD. Okay, now let's start using the SVD workflow. Before we do that, let's enable the workflow first. Select all the nodes and don't forget to use the shift button. Then right click, bypass. I'm gonna also bypass this video combine. Okay. Now we have two choices. We can use the generated images that we have saved previously. To do that, we're gonna add load image and choose our file. I'm gonna select the SDXL version. Then just plug in our image into initial image here for the SVD image video nodes. And the second method, you can directly plug the image from the VAE decodes and 
Progetail. This way, it's gonna generate the video automatically. So for now, I'm gonna use only this image. So make sure to select the SVD extension for the checkpoint order. And go to the key sampler. I'm gonna leave everything as it is. And here I'm gonna show you what are the key parameters for the SVD extension. We have two main parameters, the motion bucket, which allows you to generate more motion for the video, and the augmentation level. The more you increase this level, the more your video gonna be different from the original image. So make sure to choose your file wisely. I'm gonna show you the effect of these two parameters and we're gonna see that together. But before, let's bypass those nodes. We don't need them anymore. And I'm gonna click Q prompt. Here we have our results of stable video diffusion. We can see that we have a small motion in the in video. Okay, I'm gonna select another image. And we're gonna set multiple parameters. I'm gonna select this one. And increase the motion bucket and show you the results. And now we have our results. You can see our fire is moving smoothly. Okay. And now you can see a comparison video of different motion bracket and augmentation level. So it's up to you to choose the optimum parameters for your video. So that's it for today's video. Thank you for watching. If you like this type of video, please push the like button for me and leave a comment. And thank you for watching.